I was inspired to record this with the looming pencils down event. I say looming as if it's still going on, but it's basically been confirmed at this point that Marvel and DC are pretty much shutting down as are various other bigger comic book companies. Um, and I'm coming at this from somebody who has had a more recent emergence of interest for comic books. I was never against comic books. I'm not a normie, but I'm not casual. I'm also not an expert. I fall between casual and somebody who would be knowledgeable, which is why I don't typically. On this channel, I've never really made any video talking about anything comic book related other than a video I made about Ethan Van Skyver. I do have a growing interest in comic books, which I'll talk about that in a little bit, and I do, I would say, actively follow different comic skate creators, and uh, I would say they have definitely enlivened my emerging interest in comic books. To me, looking at it from a more outside perspective, I'd say, but somebody who has an interest, this seems like it's been a long time, a long time coming, and it's due to the marketing strategy of these major comic book companies that led to their eventual downfall. I mean, we had a event like COVID-19 that obviously thrusted this, I would say, developing issue of their own creation and by their own i mean dc and marvel and the various other bigger comic book companies but covid19 this pandemic just thrust the issue out there or it really cultured this issue that was developing looking at it from an outside perspective it seems pretty obvious why this happened it seems like the major comic book companies were pandering to people who never cared about comic books in the first place. And I'll talk about that more and I'll talk about my interest in comic books and how this relates to the whole thing, but they were pandering to the wrong person. And this is a question I have to ask myself, the leadership or the writers that, are, that have infiltrated various roles at these companies, the question I have to ask myself is, did they actually care about comic books? Do they actually have an interest in comic books? Or do they just so happen to have a particular educational background or some sort of talent that could carry over to comic books and they see the medium of comic books as a way to peddle what they believe and you know throw it out there to the masses the reason why i have to ask that is because everything that they've been doing on the comic book and these companies anyway particular particularly dc and marvel has been the most anti-business mentality that you could possibly have that's the mentality they've been running this business these businesses with and i say that again because of who they were really marketing this towards at this point i think everybody's heard about snowflake and safe space the the new warriors and i'm not going to talk about that but i'm just bringing that up to substantiate what i'm saying and of course you'll have this uh a, a lot of main characters having qualities changed about them iceman from x-men becoming gay all of a sudden any black character has to express how they're black and i have no no problem with these demographics that they're pandering to or that they are attempting to represent supposedly but there is a way to do it without belittling your main comic book target audience, but that's what they've been doing. What the hell is my point? Think about, I, I know I'm generalizing here a little bit, but think about this. The people, so I'm not basing my generalizations off of unsubstantiated nonsense that I'm just making up and just speaking out into, you know, whoever listens. This is substantiated. So I'm not generalizing just so I can, you know, divide people into groups and then attack them that way. And the generalizations I am making, I think, do reflect a bit of reality. And if you have any disagreement or protest, you can go ahead and tell me in the comment section below. But think about what the stereotypical comic book consumer is. Just think of the stereotype. Now think about the people that comic book industry is currently pandering to. And now let's think of one of the buzzwords that has sort of taken off in the last two years, and maybe even four years. The word is incel, which is involuntary celibate or celibacy. Incel. 
for short. Which means that you can't get laid and it's not by any choice of your own. You would like to get laid, but you can't. So it's not abstinence, it's not asexuality. This is, you want to get laid, but you can't. And it used to refer to more disabled people who were incapable of, you know, partaking in intercourse of, 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 of any variety, but it's been... I would say it's been appropriated by a particular ideology, specifically the left wing, and right wing, right leaning people have their own buzzwords like cuck, simp, and so on. And I'm not saying that none of these buzzwords have no accuracy at all, maybe they do, but that's not my point. Let's take this word incel. Now, when you thought of the stereotypical comic book consumer, what do you think of? You think of an incel. These people that they're pandering to, to try to sell comic books to, th this ideology that they're pandering to, belittles the stereotypical comic book consumer. Now, I don't think comic book consumers are incels or are, you know, the stereotypes that you're saying, but from my experience, so I graduated high school in 2015. Through my experience, I didn't know anybody who admittedly read any comic books, and the ones who did read comic books either kept it quiet or they were those kids who would hang out with the kids that would play Magic at the Gathering in the library during lunch or after school or in the bus yard waiting for the buses or they, they'd be in some obscure hallway and they'd be playing Magic the Gathering, you'd have some people playing Yu-Gi-Oh, you'd have you know, the Dungeons and Dragons crowd, the nerdy crowd. Those kids were kind of incels in a way. I mean, some of them, I mean, they had like, they would pass around a girl within their group. I mean, for the most part, they were virgins. And I'm not belittling them, but these people that they're trying to pander to are the types of people or the ideology that belittles these sort of nerds. So just to make it crystal clear, I don't think comic book consumers are nerds. I will say that these stereotypical nerds are probably the ones who would be more receptive to comic books than the people, than the ideologues who these companies are trying to pander to. Which, in my mind, trying to wrap my head around this seems totally counterproductive to your goal of running a business. Pandering to the audience that makes fun of people that enjoy the, the product that you are selling. It's like trying to sell a movie, a, a visual masterpiece, to a blind person. It's like trying to make music for a deaf person. Now I know blind people can enjoy audio. There's very various, you know, blind, you know, blindnesses and deaf people can feel the beat of music. I get that, but that's what it's like. It's not a very good idea to make music if you're trying to run a business. You're not going to take over Sony Records or Warner Music Company and have them try to be profitable while making music for deaf people. It's counterproductive and it's stupid, but that's what the comic book industries are doing. They're doing the equivalent of that. They're pandering to an ideology that typically belittles, insults in the most vulgar and despicable ways possible the what should be a target demographic of comic books. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring my interest or my side of the story into it and how I got interested because I think I'm another target demographic for comic books. I was never one of those kids that was playing Magic the Gathering <laughs> during lunch. I never played Magic the Gathering or anything like that and any interest that I had that would seem silly to my classmates, I never really talked about it. I was used to... I was never picked on in high school, I was never bullied, I just kind of floated around and I had friends from the various different, I, I would say, stereo, stereotypical cliques um, in high school that are usually, you know, the, the jocks, the nerds, the rednecks, whatever. I had friends from, you know, each of those groups, so I, you know, I wasn't a loner or one of those types of people in high school. But I found it hard to talk about certain things that I liked because either nobody admitted that they liked the things that I like, and I'm not talking about 
I had an interest in comic books and I didn't want to tell people about it. Just listening to the type of music I did, I didn't find a lot of people who listened to the same music I did. My preference was heavy metal and obviously there's a lot of people that like heavy metal and I certainly went to school with people that liked heavy metal but the people I hung out with would judge me for it and the people who were listening to the music that I listened to had completely different uh, lifestyles than I did. As in after school they would do stuff that I was never really interested in. I never had anybody to tell my in share my interests with and I was it was usually like, ew, why would you listen to that? Or, oh, what is that? Or, oh, why would you watch that? And the specific people, if I remember correctly, that think the way that this specific ideology does, who have infiltrated comic books, or the ideology that comic books are trying to pander to, those types of people who I went to high school with were the types of people that would make fun of somebody for having an interest that is different. They would be like, ew, what is that if I were to listen to something like heavy metal? Something as mainstream as heavy metal. Everybody's heard of Slipknot. Everybody's heard of Avenged Sevenfold. And then back in the day, everybody has heard of Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and all that stuff. So it's not like it was unusual for people to have an interest in the things I had an in interest in. I never really had an interest in comic books until, well l let me explain my, I guess, where a lot of my interests have developed from. So my older brother is between 8 and 9 years older than me. He was born in the late 80s, I was born in the mid 90s. So growing up, I vaguely remember some stuff before my older brother was a teen when he was a tween. And I remember a lot of the things that he was watching as a kid and a young teen. And that's sort of how I developed my interests. Plus, I never rejected uh, the culture of my parents like a lot of kids do. So I developed certain tastes. And my brother, when he was a kid, watched the X-Men animated series, which predates my birth. But there were reruns on when I was a kid and when I was watching cartoons and my brother put it on for me because he thought I would be interested in that instead of the stupid shit that was on at the time. And I remember my first exposure to comic books was my brother had this, which is now mine and I still have it, was X-Men the animated series in comic book form but it was the pilot episode. It was a little booklet, it wasn't a little booklet, but it was a comic book of basically the pilot episode of X-Men the Animated Series. That was my first exposure to comic books, but that was before I went to school and barely knew how to read. But, so that, that's just my initial exposure. My first real developing interest in comic books was later on, I would say after 2010. So, when I was in, I would say, 6th grade, there was this TV show called Jericho that I was really interested in. Interested in. By the time I was in elementary school, I wasn't watching cartoons anymore. Unless it was like Dragon Ball Z or a rerun of X-Men, the uh, animated series. But, there was this TV show I really liked called Jericho. It had two seasons, it was cancelled twice. Um, weirdly, for some reason, I never understood that till this day. I still don't. Anyway, it got cancelled. But eventually, years later, it was continued in comic book format. Season 3, which was titled Civil War. Jericho, Season 3, Civil War. Um, you know, at the bottom it said, The groundbreaking television saga continues. I think I was... Uh, had to have been 16, 17, or 18 when my, uh, a person I was dating at the time bought it for me. That's a story for another time. For my, it was either for my birthday or Christmas. Anyway, I read the shit out of it and I loved it. So I got season four, which was also in comic book format. And I loved the shit out of it. And it was this TV show I loved, which was canceled twice. But the story was continuing in comic book format. And that's ultimately when I started you know, kind of considering this overlooked medium. Overlooked in my case. I was kind of like, huh, you know, um, maybe this medium isn't, it's something, maybe it's something I should pay attention to. I should definitely put more effort into reading it. Anyway, fast forward a couple years later, I would say one of my favorite movies growing up and even now till this day, one of my favorite horror movies and one of my favorite horror movies 
and I'd say one of the best zombie type movies of all time would have to be 28 Days Later. I wanted a continuation of that story. I liked 28 Weeks Later and I'm, you know, anxiously waiting for a 28 months later to finally come out, but a way that the story was continued was in comic book form. And after reading through this, again, this was when I just started loving comic books. On top of that, because of my YouTube interests, because I would watch Star Wars videos, because I'm a huge Star Wars fan, I fell in love with a lot of what the MCU was doing, specifically the Captain America story arc. I loved the Dark Knight trilogy, which that plays a, an important role, but at some point, I was introduced to, well no, I was introduced to a YouTuber called Young Rippo before that through his music and uh, political leanings, but his music specifically called Backwards. So I subscribed to his channel because I wanted to hear, you know, more of his music. I wanted to know when more of his music was coming out, his band's music, and he had a political leaning that I was interested in and also developing and that I agreed with. So I wanted to hear more of what this person had to say and, you know, and I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I followed him and he would talk about comic books sometimes all of a sudden and it threw me off. I was like, well, you know, I knew him for his music and political beliefs, but he also likes comic books and he'd talk about that. And then due to what I, you know, what I'd watch from him as far as comic books go and my interests in, you know, the MCU, the Dark Knight trilogy, and my interest in Star Wars, eventually comic artist Pro Secrets popped up and that is Ethan Van Skyver. I was introduced to his channel through Star Wars content and then I started becoming inundated with more comic book oriented stuff. And that's when, I, you know, here's these grown men talking about comic books, talking about things I'm interested in. And then here's things I was interested in outside of comic books being continued in comic book format. So that's when this idea just started sort of, you know, becoming cultured and becoming en enlivened in my mind and sort of in the back of my head as, well, this could be something that's interesting. So I decided when Ethan Van Skyver launched his, uh, a campaign for Cyberfrog Blood Honey. I was like, you know what? I'll 25 bucks. I'll get it. And I got it. I backed a few more Indiegogo campaigns from Comicsgate, but the main one was Cyberfrog Blood Honey. And I read it and the story was moving and I loved it. I also mentioned I was a Star Wars fan and one of my favorite villains of all time, no matter what genre we're talking about, no matter what medium we're talking about, was Darth Vader. So I had to buy eventually later on Darth Vader comic book and I can't put him down I love it I love Darth Vader and I love that this character that I love is getting a visual representation in some form and I enjoy the ever living show of it I also remember back when I got my PlayStation 3 I was in fifth grade and it was one of the first two games I ever had but it was definitely the first game I bought myself which was resistance fall of man and eventually i wanted to see more of the backstory for resistance fall of man and in my mind i always thought it would, it would be cool because i've always wanted to make movies so i thought it would be cool if one day i got to make resistance fall of man into a movie i, I want to make the first accepted video game movie by both critics and the audience and i wanted background and i wanted the story that i love to be continued so i bought the resistance comic book and then another thing that just pretty much sealed the deal for me so i said i love the dark knight trilogy i love the dark knight rises which i think i watched i think i watched it when it came out i didn't see it in theaters i watched it as soon as it became available on streaming and was you know being shown on showtime and hbo and all that jazz but i bought the dvd or one of the blue like it was the the blu-ray dvd digital sort of pack and and it came in the packaging came a bonus comic and it was the intro the beginning scenes of the dark knight rises in comic book format and it was this right here there's one more story after this to substantiate or to to uh well yeah i guess substantiate my interest in comic books i saw this movie being translated into comic book format and it really solidified this specific fact that I now accept is that comic books aren't campy at all. I, I would say that part of my initial view of comic books while I never really 
uh, had anything against them or anything negative to say about them. I always perceived them as campy, like Adam West, the Batman type of stuff. So that kind of tarnished the way I view comic book. I viewed comic books, and maybe that was how they were initially at the beginning. But I think everybody who is invested in the comic book industry or you know comp who enjoys comic books as a whole. Obviously, the most notable examples of comic books being really serious are uh, Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, um, Alan Moore's Watchmen, and of course, the Civil War line, and X-Men has dived into some pretty heavy topics. I remember, <laughs> I don't want to sound like a hipster or anything, The Walking Dead Season 1. I think, or I don't think, I know what The Walking Dead became by Season 2, Season 3, Season 4, Season 5, when its ratings, I think, were in its peak, when it was still at that growth point, when everybody around me, all my peers, all my classmates, all my acquaintances, all my friends, all my family, started to watch it. Before that, Season 1, it had a quarter of the viewership that it did before. It was, I mean, it had a substantial amount of, of viewership, especially for AMC and for a show of its kind, but it wasn't that major hit that it became. And I was one of the first ones to watch The Walking Dead of people out of people I know. Knowing that The Walking Dead came from the comic book written by Robert Kirkman, looking back at it now, it just my mind is more receptive to the medium of comic books. And to tie this all together in a neat bow, basically my entire point is, if I could just get the gist of it and summarize it for you, is that comic book companies previously, currently, are pandering to a specific group of people who never had an interest in comics in the first place. As a matter of fact, they are the type of people that would belittle most comic book fans or that would stereotype comic book consumers. Rather, the target audience should be the people that would be belittled by this group of people that they are currently pandering to, the readers who already read it, and people like me who have an interest, who just needed a little awakening, who needed an epiphany, who needed to integrate these different ideas. In, in their mind in order to view comic books as a serious medium that could provide entertainment. That's who should be the target audience. I have no problem with a niche person wanting to create a niche book for a specific group of people, but that's not what's happening. It's being shoved down our throats. I'm, just, I'm gonna make points that have already been made, but just bear with me. They're jamming this stuff down the throats of people who have been reading comic books forever. And to put the cherry on top of the insulting nature of comic books now, it's the people, the, the writers, the editors, the colorists, the artists, the people behind the marketing of these specific books are some of the most vile and disgusting pieces of human garbage to ever exist. And I feel comfortable saying that and not feeling smug and not feeling like an asshole because of the way they treat other people, the way they view half of the country, the way they view people who disagree with them, the way they view the average comic book consumer, the way they're able to discriminate just based on certain demographic qualities that vary from genetics to cultural mindsets to even geographical location. So I feel comfortable calling them human pieces of garbage. These are, th this is what I feel, I feel this and I think I've substantiated it enough and I think just by doing research you can substantiate it and I think by watching certain YouTubers you can have this substantiated and with the amount, the, the specific examples I did bring up really bolsters my point of this whole thing. This was a long time coming and I think it was really, really thrust it out there. It, the time was cut in half by this pandemic. It was a long time coming. And in reality, these people, they dug their own graves, they carved their own tombstone, and they planted themselves firmly in their graves. And it's not surprising.